Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bredenburg YouTube channel. I have got the dash done, finally. It is sitting right there. We are about to go over it and what a long, tough road that was. Definitely learned a lot. Um, back feeds were an issue, uh, but I got it all figured out. So this dash is ready to go back in the car, but it has to be disassembled first to fit in there. But let's go over the dash itself, I'll kind of explain the functions, and then you know later on once we get it in the car, we'll go over how it works and everything. So let's talk about it. Well, just a quick overview of the dash. I mean, you can see it looks really nice. Um, it needs cleaned up, like uh, these spots right here. James is going to fix this and then flock the dash. And flocking means that you basically put like a layer of stuff on it um, that makes it non-reflective because we have issues. Um, with sunlight during the day reflecting off of the dash onto the windshield and it gets tough to see where we're going So I guess let's start with the fuse box So this is just an Eaton Busman. Uh, I don't remember what the number of the fuse box is And basically what I did is I just cut a hole in the dash and mounted it to the dash and in here we have a bunch of relays um, It's all documented on my laptop. I don't remember what each one does, but I know this is PCM uh, we've got headlights, wipers, fuel pump one, fuel pump two. We don't have a surge tank yet, so there's no fuel pump two. So it's uh, fuse is also missing. Um, then we have, uh, I don't remember what this one is exactly. I should. Then we have the starter. Now you can see there's a lot of fuses for a race car. Well, the reason is each of these relays has their own fuse and then every single thing in the car has its own fuse. Uh, but each of these relays have their own and then nothing is tied into a circuit with the next. There's hardly any junctions in here except for the headlights. Now that basically does it for the fuse box. A couple extra spare fuses here. If anybody's got any questions, toss it in the comments. Moving on to the center panel. So the center panel, pretty proud of. James made the panel itself. Uh, this is the V1, so it's got some missing, like uh, not missing, but like uh, misaligned screw holes here. We'll start with the cell phones. This is the Han data. So the Han data will stream all of its information to it. The oil pressure gauge that I put on the engine along with the oil temperature gauge. I believe we can get the app to show that. This is for the lap timer. There will be a GPS right there. And then that will show us real time data, how we're performing as drivers. We like information, we're engineers. So let's get on to the buttons. So we've got the main switch. All of our power goes through this. If that is off, the car is dead. So we turn that on and then IG2 will light up, which it was already on, but we'll turn this on. There is a big relay right down from here that controls this whole side of the fuse box. So this controls this side. This controls this side. When you turn that on, all of this stuff wakes up, all the relays wake up, so your control circuits all wake up via IG2. So that'll light up all the switches and the dash and everything else. And then moving down, we have the start button, pretty obvious, except for the fact that its ground comes from down here, goes to the switch, then it goes to the clutch pedal. When you push the clutch pedal, it enables the ground to go to this relay, which then supplies power to the starter solenoid, and the vehicle will crank the engine itself rather. Headlights, this will also dim all of the lights on the dash except for the combi meter. Then we have high beams, doesn't change the dimming or anything, it basically just switches the headlights from this relay to this relay and this powers the high beams. And there's a diode in there for that because that circuit's actually more complicated than just switching relays but it is what it is. Wipers on, wipers high, and what that one does is it switches these two relays so it's basically the same type of circuit except these are ground side switch, so it doesn't need a, real, or a diode. So yeah, that was a nightmare. Anyway, this is for the cool suit pump. So when we turn that on, that switch turns on that red pump. I remember that black little pump down there so I don't have to come back. This one here is the rain light. So on the back of the car, all the way back here, that switch controls the ground via that harness, which won't be taped down when it's done, to this guy. And then this guy right here is the pit limiter. When we turn that on, it grounds a pin in the PCM telling it we can only go whatever the designated pit speed is, and it'll set a rev limiter. It's basically repurposing the launch control, and then it'll make these lights flash. So they wig wag back and forth. They're super bright and they're super annoying, so that when you leave the pit, you remember to turn this off so you don't try to go onto a track with uh, an Audi R8, which is what this will be racing against, which is, you know, moderately terrifying. Uh, and only be able to go 35 miles an hour. So these will annoy you enough where you're like, good God, make them go away. You'll turn that switch off and then you'll be able to go 
you know, 200 horsepower worth of running away from an Audi R8. Moving on. Let's start, uh, let's start here. This is a PCM reset. Basically this relay here has a normally open, normally closed. The PCM will be running through the normally closed. When we press this button, it will go to the normally open and it will cut power to the PCM. The reason we do that is because we have a bunch of protections set in the PCM and when it over temps, um, it'll set a rev limiter until, uh, I believe until we reset the PCM. I don't think it goes away. So what we did is added a switch here to make it reset itself. And then if it comes back, we know it's an actual problem, but you know, racing this thing, sometimes we get air bubbles in there um, that, sh that break loose that wouldn't normally on the street kind of deal because this car gets beat up pretty bad. I mean, you can see the quarter back there is pretty whipped. I mean, this is a race car for sure. Um, let's see here. Moving on, this is unassigned and it also controls that red light down there. Um, I kind of just did that in case we ended up needing it. Uh, we can just undo that light and repurpose it for something else if we have to. Unassigned as well, but I think what I'm going to do is run that into the wiper relay, which is the fourth one in there, to make the wipers clear the windshield so we don't have to reach over here. Play around with this, we can just push a button here and the wipers will clear until you let go and then they'll go back to park. This one here runs the drink pump, that little pump I told you to remember. This guy here is flag. It controls the green light. What it does, you push this button, that green light will stay on for one minute. Well, there's a GoPro that has about this aspect in the car and it will see that come on and now James can go through the footage much faster and then just watch for that light to come on via the driver saying, hey, something cool, crazy, intense, bad just happened by pushing that one time. This last one here, it goes to the radio, which you can see it right there. It is your push to talk, and I just repurposed a Baofeng harness to uh, get that to work, and it goes into the main harness of the car. I mean, you can see all these switches have the same wiring and everything. The Baofeng harness only goes to the radio connector, which is right about there, and then it goes into the regular harness where the steering wheel and everything hooks up to the dash. And then the way we'll know if the radio is transmitting, one, if anybody's responding to you, but two, well, more importantly, this one here, this transmit light will come on when you're talking. So there it is. There's the control circuits in the car. Things left to do. Uh, I'm going to get rid of those. I got to take these stocks off because all their functions have been repurposed. Um, let's see here. Once I get some more wiring in the car, I will run all of these leads where they need to go. This is for the wideband. Um, then this is like for the door light. We have door lights on there that light up the numbers so that the track can tell what car we are in the middle of the night because we do run 24-hour races. Uh, I've got to run those wires as well. That will go to the factory connector that meets up with this guy here. And the reason I'm doing that is in case we get into some accident or somebody makes a, an oopsie where the uh, engine harness needs replaced, we can just use a factory harness. So. A lot of talking, but I'm very proud of this dash. It was a very, very tough project. Um, I learned a lot. It turned out very nice. I mean, you can tell it'll look even better in the car. Um, we're gonna cut some stuff out of the back of it. Like we don't need an actual glove box. So we're gonna cut that out. Um, and then uh, like just make it a, basically a door that we can open to get to the back side of the fuse box. And I've, the latch isn't in there right now. We took it out because we didn't think we we're gonna use it. So it's just zip tied shut with that zip tie there. But yeah, very proud of this. And uh, the inside of the car looks amazing. The battery box, all that stuff in there. Luke, my buddy, that always helps me out, is going to come and he is going to uh, route lines for the fire bottle. And he's got a nice 4 a.m. bulkhead for the firewall so we no longer have a hose running through the firewall. He'll bend everything with good tooling. Oh, excuse me. He'll bend everything with good tooling. It'll be super clean up there. I cannot wait. And this car is coming along very nicely.